This is the book of Second Edges, chapter 15, verse 14, in the modern translation, and it reads, The world and the people in it are doomed. Doomed is another word for judgment or judged. The war that will bring their destruction is very near, World War III. We're already in the beginning stages of it, skirmishes, battles, proxy wars, and it's going to lead into a greater world conflict, which is the third war, World War III. It says the war that will bring their destruction is very near. Nations will arm themselves and fight against other nations. You're seeing that right now. It's going to uh, culminate into civil war, class wars, race wars, and ultimately world war. And from the world war, war of the world, because the Lord is going to come from his realm to face this place. In the midst of it all, it will be a time of testing and Jacob's trouble. All right. It's going to be the great test and Jacob's trouble. This is uh, the book of Jeremiah 42 and 17. And it reads, so shall it be with all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt. Modern Egypt is America, Babylon the Great, to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. And none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. See, the Lord is going to bring this evil. The Lord is bringing the test. The Lord is bringing the judgment and also the deliverance and the salvation. But what side are you going to be on, Jake? You so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. What side are you going to be on? In the midst of you being in trouble, is going to be world war, civil war, class wars, race wars, hunger, pestilence, evils, darkness, plagues, things unseen. All right. And then the great test of that MOTB, where there's going to be a conscious decision that you're going to have to make in order to survive. It was seen from a carnal standpoint, but those that trust in the Lord will be guided by the Lord. But in the great test, will you pass or will you fail? That's what this is all about. Verse 16 down below in 2nd Edges 15 and uh, 16. There will, great, there will be great political turmoil with one group trying to overpower another and gain control while ignoring the legitimate government. There will no longer be free access to the cities. There's going to be 15-minute cities, martial law, civil war in certain parts. Uh, uh, checkpoints, military installations, foreign troopers, Gurga troops, lawlessness. OK, no man's land. So wherever you're at, you're going to be there unless you're being guided by the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. For if you're not, just as we read in Jeremiah 42 and 17, either the sword, famine, pestilence will come upon you because the Lord is bringing it upon you. Verse 18, because the struggle for power will bring destruction, terror and total confusion wherever people live, driven by famine and terrible suffering. It's going to drive a lot of people to get the MOTB, the RFID. It says driven by famine and terrible suffering, people will assault their neighbors and, mercil and mercilessly plunder their possessions. Verse 20, Yahweh says, Bashim Yahushai, I am calling together all the kings of the earth to come from north, south, east, and west to turn back and restore what they have taken, our land, us as a people, and everything uh, uh, that they got unjustly, because the Lord is going to require blood at their hands, and he's going to bring forth world war. That's why he's calling all the kings of the earth, all kingdoms to fight in the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is in the farther and western reach of Asia. All right, where our land sits over there in the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, what they call the Fertile Crescent. All right. It says, I will pay them back with the same harsh treatment they have always given to my chosen people, the Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native American. The Lord, Yahweh, Bashim al -Shai says, verse 22, I will use my power and there will be no mercy for sinners. I will put to death all who have murdered innocent people. Esau, Eden, the self-proclaimed white man, first and foremost, the other heathen nations, and also two thirds of our people that have gone after the way of the heathen and did not take the time of repentance to repent and turn back from the, the great judgments and evils that the Lord is going to bring upon this society. Verse 23, my anger has become so fierce that fire has blazed out to burn up the foundations of the earth going into the missiles and also the laser fire from the ships, concentrated fire. 
All right. The Lord is going to uh, uh, plead with all flesh by fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. It says. My anger has become so fierce that the fire has blazed out to burn up the foundations of the earth and to burn up sinners like straw. Verse 24 sinners who do not keep my commands are doomed, judged, says the Lord. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Verse 25, I will have no mercy on them. Out of my sight, you rebels, do not defile my holy temple. And the temple is our bodies. And those of our people that get the MOTB and lose faith and lose heart, have a double mind and become unstable and go into uh, 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 this society, this system, because they were hungry or they had no faith, the Lord will show you no mercy when he brings the judgment because you failed the test. But will we, the hopeful elect, pass the test? Lord is willing, I'm one of those men. The test is coming. Are you ready? So with that, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, in whom the world is ignorantly called Jehovah, or Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, in whom the world has ignorantly called Jesus Christ, in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American and Seminole Indians to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings given double honors unto my apostles, my elders and my teachers that are a great millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so that taught me and brothers like me this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power and of his anointed. Now these are the two most important things you could ever and will ever know so that you may be preserved from the said evils and that may and that you may see the salvation of the Lord, knowing the name of the Father and his only begotten Son, their true and proper names in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, our language, the, the Lashwan Kodash, which means holy tongue, Lashwan meaning tongue, and Kodash, Kodash meaning holy. Now these be the names that are written. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahawah, Yah meaning he, Hawa meaning exists or is or is to be. He is, he exists, he the existing one, for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And in the name of his only begotten son, a name that is above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite men first and also to the believer, consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith, even the name, even that mighty name, the name Yahawashai. Yah meaning he, Yahawashai, meaning deliverer and savior. For that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form, yet as an angelic force, but we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. So, Lord's one, this is an edifying lesson, and Lord's one, I call this lesson the great test, even Jacob's trouble. All right. So let's let's jump right into this lesson, and I'm gonna play this clip from uh, <laughs> uh, Boys in the Hood. But I always love this scene because that test that they had to take it in the music behind it was just on point. But I, I kept thinking about it all day to day. I was like, Oh yeah, remember that test? Cause most Jake's when they take tests, they go into it like all oh, nervous and all that because they knew they didn't study. They knew they did. They crammed every goddamn thing in the night before, but then certain Jake's that go in there with, with, with a little bit of confidence. They're like, man, I've been studying here and there. I've been putting my, my time in to study for this test all week. So now it comes the day of the test. You have a, a confidence about you. Like, All right, man, I'm going to go in there and do the best I can. I'm going to pass it. So you got the elect going into this test, knowing they're going to pass it because they trust in the Lord. They've been getting their minds and their souls ready, their faith uh, uh, built up. But then you have two thirds that have been lollygagging and bullshitting the whole time. And the test is coming. It ain't coming on your fucking time or on your cue. It's going to come when the Lord wants the test to come. But are you ready? That's the question. A lot of these other camps, they ain't ready for the test because they ain't warning their congregations nor themselves. They're not preparing their minds and their hearts for the great test, even Jacob's trouble. All right. And in the midst of Jacob's trouble, world war, civil war, class war, societal collapse, plagues. OK. All right. The, uh, the test of faith. All right. A time like never before. Will you be ready? All right. Now, this is out of the book of Second Edges, chapter 15, verse 26. And it reads, Yahweh Bashimashai is aware of all those who sin against him. And he will hand them over to death and destruction. Ooh, you see that? Most most people don't even know that that's what it is. It ain't a, a um, multiple choice test. It's like a test where you really have to 
put in the work, break down the whole math problem and then give the answer or, or um, uh, in, the, in, in the English section or in the comprehension section is like a word. Uh, 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 it's pretty much like the c- comprehending what the what the verse is saying or what the, the word means. It might ask you, what does this word mean? What is this? What is it's this word's place in this uh, in this uh, uh, phrase, so to speak? Jacob's trouble. Who's the who's the uh, subject of the of the phrase? Jacob is the subject of the phrase. What is the um, what do you call it? What is what is the thing that Jacob is in or is about to enter into the trouble? The trouble is the thing that Jake is going Jacob is going to enter into. Who is the uh, the character in the in, in the said? Uh, wording Jacob. Okay. Jacob is the person or place or thing, the noun. All right. The verb, the thing that's going to take place, the action that's going to take place is the trouble. So it's, it's, a, it's a test like that. It ain't a test where you just, it's a multiple choice. See Jake, like multiple choice uh, tests. They can go, oh, well, they already got the answer right there. could be that. Okay. No. What is it? What is the MOTB? What to avoid? These are all the things that are about to transpire. OK, that's why the Lord says he knows those that sin against him and he's going to deliver them over to death and destruction. But uh, but the whole world thinks the Lord is just love. No, you have you've been wrongly mis. Uh, 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 you misunderstood. You've been uh, lied to. You've been bamboozled, duped. It says terrible disasters have already come upon the world and there is no escape. You have sinned against Yahweh by Shemel Shai and he will not rescue you. That's going into the two thirds. So I'm going to play this clip. Shalom. See that? <laughs> yeah, that clip was cool, man. I hope you enjoyed it. But it was beautiful how at the beginning they was taking the test, and you know, the, uh, Ricky is just like most Jakes looking around, lollygagging and shit, just not paying attention. And you had a uh, Trey, who was played by Cuba Gooden Jr., is kind of like the elect, like, like looking at you, like, bro, take the test. We in the test. Like, pay attention, take the test. You know, <laughs> you know, like the apostle says, the apostle Tar says. Jake ain't gonna be uh uh you ain't gonna have to Jake ain't gonna have to ask anybody is it Jacob's trouble. You're gonna know it's Jacob's trouble. Cause Jake is gonna be in trouble, man. All right, and then you have my man Furious Styles played by uh Lawrence Fishburne. He's like, how you think you boys did on the test? See, that's what it's gonna come down to. How do you think you're gonna perform when all this goes down? Have you been preparing yourself? Have you built up your faith? Do you know the name, first and foremost? First and foremost, do you know the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son? Do you stand on those names? See, we stand on the name of Yahweh by Shimon Shai because we did our studies. We know that's the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. We know the name of His Son is Yahweh Shai. We ain't guessing, oh, maybe it's Jesus, maybe Yeshua, maybe Christ. Like, no, what is the name of the Lord's Son? He's the one that's coming back to save. What is His name? Did he not say, hey, you call upon my name, you shall be saved? You got to know the Father's name as well. So the elect shall praise his holy name. What is the name of the Father? Oh, maybe it's just God or Jehovah or Yahweh. No, what is it? You're going to have to know in that time. All right? Yeah, Jay going to be looking around, hoping somebody comes saving. FEMA, Esau, 
an idol, they mama, Jesus Christ, God. Just like uh, 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 Ricky was looking around and then uh, Cuba Gooden Jr.'s character, Trey, was looking at him like, bro, the fuck, what are you doing? Pay attention. Do, do the test. You're taking a test right now. <laughs> you see? So how you boys think y'all did on the test? And then uh, when they was walking in there into the uh, into the financial uh, uh, building where uh, Furies works at, He's like, damn, girl got more cake than Duncan Hines, man. He's like, and then you then you heard Cuba Gun Jr.'s character say, uh, Trey say, probably buy the chip. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? Hey, because most Jay going to think they doing good in that time when all hell breaks loose by getting that chip. But no, really, you just sealed your fate. You sealed your destruction. Okay? Because you sinned against the Lord. That's a great sin. You pretty much saying you rather choose this society and Esau eat them to be your Lord and your God, then your how about Shemal Shai that's coming to save his people from old or great, uh, uh, so from so great a transgression, because the Lord is about to completely destroy this land of America. All right, he's gonna take his elect out and he's gonna destroy everybody else, both man and beast. The whole land is gonna be laid desolate. All right, so there you go, man. But bear with me, brothers, bear with me. Okay, bear with me All right, Shalom, Makim, I'm back. All right, now the question is, will you be able to pass the test? All right, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach and the Apocrypha. And this is verse one. This is uh, chapter two, verse one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, which means testing. How you, how you, how do you think you did on the test? I think we did all right. You know how they were saying, I think I did all right. You got to know, you got to be confident. How are you going to do on this test? The final test. All right. Jacob's trouble. And in the midst of all that trouble was going to be going on world war, class war, civil war, societal collapse, plagues. All right. Judgments is being, are going to be executed. Spiritual uh, uh, entities are going to be let loose. Uh, all right. Uh, the Lord is going to be dishing out. Uh, uh, payback, recompense, whether it be good or ill. All right. Come on now. How you think you're going to do? If you know your Habashimah Shah, you'll do just fine. If you don't know, then you're through. And the same must know it after death by pain. Now, this is the book of Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he, going into the elect, shall be saved out of it. And you go into that word, alas, it means unfortunate. So if you're not uh, prepared for this test, if you didn't get yourself ready, if you didn't study to show yourself approved before Yahweh, Bashim al not being ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth and actually uh, being been given true teachers to teach you, to, to guide you, to feed you with knowledge and understanding, then you're going to be in a world of hurt. All right? Because most Jake don't study. Jake don't like to read. don't like to do anything. They like to lollygag and bullshit all the way up until the day of the test but this this test ain't gonna be so where you you got multiple choice questions and you might pass by the skin of your teeth nah you're gonna have to know your how about and know what the hell is going on for you to to 
survive. It's going to be very unfortunate for two thirds of our people. As the Lord said, he's going to give you to the sword, famine, pestilence, and you will not escape the evil that the Lord will bring upon you. OK, now the elect will be delivered. All right, will be uh, 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 covered. Shielded. This is uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus. All right. Verse two. Or Sirach two and two. Set thy heart, which is your mind, aright and constantly endure. That's what we're going to have to do when these times come. All right. Get 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 out of one situation, going into another situation, but you're trusting the whole time, trusting in Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. See, when, we're, when we have to move, when we're cast out of our homes, when we have to be like pilgrims upon earth. We're going to uh, uh, take that cheerfully. Most most Jake ain't going to want to leave. Like, no, this is my home. I ain't going nowhere. And then in, in, uh, and in that window of, of, of society collapsing, anybody that has any sense will tell you, you may be ha you may have like a three day window before people really catch on that. No help is coming and chaos ensues, lawlessness. But even in the midst of that three day window, 72 hours, right? Really, uh, those that know will tell you, OK, in that first 24 hours, you better get to where you're going to be and get whatever supplies you're going to need. Because after that 24 hours, ain't going to be nothing left. People going to ransack the stores. They're going to be thinking the same thing you might be. You might be thinking. <clears throat> but if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. See, most of Jake is just going to be getting ready when the test comes, when the trouble comes, uh, looking around, dozing off, daydreaming instead of focusing on the test, like in the clip. Trey was just doing doing his test. And you got Ricky looking around, kind of unsure of himself, unsure of the test. Like, damn, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe that wasn't the right answer. And then, you know, Trey looking at him like, bro, take the test. <laughs> like, you taking the test, bro. You know? You gotta finish. All right. Now, this is uh verse four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient, which is uh, meaning to suffer when thou art changed to a low estate. All right, most everybody's going to be put on the same playing field. It ain't, it ain't going to matter how much money you got. It ain't going to matter how pretty you are, how strong you are. It's going. The only thing that's going to matter is, is it is uh, is the Lord dealing with you. That's going to be the only thing that matters is if the Lord and a big if at that, if the Lord is dealing with you, that's what it's going to be. All right. Now, let me read this in uh, uh, the NLT, Jeremiah 30 and 7. In all history, there has never been such a time of terror. It will be a time of trouble for my people, Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. And those of our people scattered among the nations because trouble is going to be hitting every nation. And the Lord is going to vex all uh, people with uh, uh, with adversity. Even the elect to try them, to test them as gold. And then the rest of the world is going to be tried. All right. It says, yet in the end, they will be saved. The elect, first and foremost, Jake. Uh, 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 first and foremost is going to be the Israel of the Heavenly Father. All right. Because ultimately the whole nation is going to be all right in time. But two thirds is going to be taken out. And the one third is going to be ransomed. All right. As the living for the dead. See, because two thirds of our people have to die. That's their lot. They have to fall into that category. All right. It has to be an exchange, a transfer. You see. Yes, that's what it is. All right. Because Jake like multiple choice tests, but Jake didn't mark the right box. Jake didn't go with the truth. They went with uh, something else. All right, let me get, uh, man, all be damned that believe not the truth. You didn't want to believe. You wanted us to be so wrong. But yet the Lord was like, nope, they're right. <sighs> man, Romans 14, 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith. Ooh, that's what's going to get the just through. The just shall live uh, in this time by what? 
faith. All right. But if you have not faith, if you don't have no confidence, which means with faith, con meaning with, fidance meaning faith. If you don't have faith, it is impossible to please our power. Why Yahweh shy? And you're going to be unsure of yourself. You're going to doubt and, and doubt is uh, the, the evil heart of unbelief. And you're going to fall away and be destroyed into whatever you going to be. And then you're going to be placed into whatever category the Lord sees fit to put you in. Either to death to death, the sword to the sword, to the famine to the famine, or to the captivity to the captivity, which represents concentration camps. All right, something is going to have you. The sword, the famine, the pestilence. Something by the mighty hand of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh will take you if you know him not. Verse 5, up top, Ecclesiastes 2 and 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Ooh, see, the elect is going to be tried through these times as fire tries gold. All right. It says, believe in him, Yahweh Bashemashai, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Whew. Now back down to the book of Romans again, down below, Romans 14 and 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And sin, we already know the wages of sin is what? Death. Is the book of 2 Thessalonians 2 and 12, that they all might be damned who? The two thirds who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Because you get that chip, you threw. Like, damn, baby got more cake than Duncan Hines. Probably was a chip. All right? Because most people that's going to be living fat only for a little time, you're going to die anyway. You're not going to be able to escape the hand of the Almighty. So what was the point of you getting that? All right. What was the point of you, Jace, believing this in this society when you finally see it collapse? Will you still trust in this society? I think not. But then at that moment, it's going to be it's going to be too late. All right. And that was pretty much it right there for down below. But let's jump into that Thessalonians a little more. Reading up top in Ecclesiastes or Sirach 2, we'll read verse uh, 7, continuing. Ye that fear the Lord, the elect, wait for his mercy, and go not aside lest ye fall. And many are going to fall in this time. Many are going to fail the test. Ye that fear the Lord, Yahweh Bashimel, shall believe him, and your reward woo, shall not fail, because the Lord is going to be dishing out recompense and reward. But you want it to be good and not ill. Because the Lord is going to be dishing out rewards to the wicked and to the ungodly and to the unrighteous. For horrible is the end of the ungodly generation. It tells you that. It says, verse 9, Ye that fear the Lord, Yahweh, Bashimash, I hope for good, woo, expectation, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see that ever any trust in the Lord, Yahweh, Bashimash, I was confounded, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Whew. See that? Now, real quick, I'm going to jump back to this Ecclesiastes or Sirach 2, but I want to get uh, what Judas said. We have not been tried like uh, our forefather Abraham or, or Isaac or even uh, Israel, whose name was Jacob, but it was changed to Israel after he battled the angel. See? They were tested. And they came out as fine gold. But uh, Judith was telling our people like, hey, we wasn't tested like, like they were. And you're you going to try to, you know, uh, uh, give the Lord a, a due date or whatever. Like, nah, you in the test. The Lord is the teacher and he's looking at you. Are you, are you, how you think you did? Because at the end of it, you're going to know if you passed or failed. You get a crown, you passed. You die, you fail. <laughs> you see? Oh, man, like a. Uh, like the clip on, um, like, no, like the scene on, uh, Star Wars, uh, episode five, Empire Strikes Back, which most fans, uh, you know, that's the, their most favorite Star Wars film. That's like the, the, the best one, the fifth one in the trilogy, but it's the, uh, Empire Strikes Back. All right. And then Yoda was telling Luke, uh, he said, oh, uh, Luke, uh, couldn't lift the, the starfighter out of the, out of the swamp or the lake or whatever. But then Yoda said, uh, judge me by my size, do you? And you should not. For my ally is the force and a powerful ally it is. And he lifted out 
the uh, the starship, right? Or the, or the, uh, the X-Wing. And then Luke looked at him and he said, I don't believe it. And then Yoda looked at him and said, and that is why you fail. Ooh, because you don't believe you through. All right. Now, this is uh, Judith 8 and 24. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts and minds depend on us and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us because our nation really is dependent on the elect. Because as uh, it is written, if it was if the Lord did not save us a small remnant all right, of election, if the Lord did not save us uh, a small remnant, we would have been like unto Sodom and there unto Gomorrah. So praise Yahweh by Shai. All right. Praise Yahweh for Yahweh Shai, who shed his precious blood. And that blood covers the elect. And through this elect, we'll come back the rest of the nation, even the two thirds that die. All right. And the, and the promise of Abraham will be kept. But many have to die. But if it wasn't for that remnant, if it wasn't for the, you know, the the, the godly plan of Yahweh Vashimah Shai, we would have been destroyed. We would not be here. All right. It says, remember, verse 26, Judith 8 and 26. Remember what things he did to Abraham. See? And how he tried Isaac. And what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia of Syria. When he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. All right. Through all these tests, these men were uh, uh, increased. But they had to get through the test first. See, we got to go through the fire and the water because beyond it is that broad field, which represents the kingdom. Verse 27. For he have not tried us in the fire as he did them for the examination of their hearts, their minds, their intent. Neither have he taken vengeance on us, but. The Lord, Yahweh, by Shemashah, doth scourge them that come near unto him to admonish them, to warn them. Because it's going to be a test. Test, it, it, it uh, goes into examination. You're exercising something. You're trying it out. All right? So the Lord is going to try us. But with that, let's uh, jump back to Sirach 2. Please ask us to. All right, in verse 11, for the Lord Yahweh Bashimashai is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. How much more in that time, Jacob's trouble? That's going to be a time of affliction, time of testing. All right? A time of uncertainty to most, because many are going to be perplexed. When you go into that word perplexed, in the masculine form, aporeo, it goes into uh, losing sight of oneself. Of being embarrassed, knowing not what to do, not knowing which way to turn. But we're not going to be like that. The men of the Lord, the elect, we're going to have faith. All right, which is a thing pleasing unto the Lord. And faith is a shield to protect against all the, the darts of the wicked and all the plots and strategies of the wicked. And also faith is a gift and faith can subdue kingdoms. All right. Faith is a superpower. How about that? Second Thessalonians 2 and 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yahweh Bashimah Shai for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, Yahweh Bashimah Shai, because Yahweh hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. You see that? All from the beginning, all from the jump. Ecclesiasticus 2 and 12 up top. Woe be to fearful hearts, minds, and faint hands, weak hands. All right, the Lord ain't dealing with that. Plus, if you ain't laboring now, why would the Lord do anything for you then? And the sinners, so like and the sinner that go with two ways, a double-minded person, a double-minded man, the Lord is going to not deal with a person like that. Looking off, daydreaming, not believing, the Lord ain't dealing with that. Verse 13, woe unto him that is faint-hearted, weak-minded. For he believeth not. Ooh, that uh, that evil heart of unbelief. Therefore shall he not be defended. Ooh, man. Because we know that faith is a shield. If you don't have that faith, how are you going to have a defense? Whew. Everything that's going to come at you is going to hit you and take you out. All right. Verse 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience, lost suffering, that, that don't want to suffer. You get that MOTB so you can get a little comfort. Just know that you have not escaped the hand of the Almighty. All right. 
And what will you do when the Lord, Yahweh, Bashimah Shah, will visit you or shall visit you? Verse 15, they that fear the Lord, Yahweh, Bashimah Shah, will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways, keeping his commandments. All right, that's going to keep you safe, guarded, protected. All right. Verse 16, they that fear the Lord, Yahweh, Bashimah Shah, will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. Because a lot of people ain't going to be uh, keeping the ways of uh, the father. When the cameras and everything is off in this real time, uh, a lot of people going to think, well, you know, the Lord's still going to love me. You know, he knows my heart. No, he knows that your heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And he's going to destroy you for it. But our mind is going to be that of the mind of Mashiach. OK, we're going to want what the Lord wants. We're going to keep his commands. And the Lord said he's going to be the guide of them, which keep his commandments. All right. Reading it on. It says, verse 17. They that fear the Lord, Yahweh, Bashima Shai, will prepare their hearts, their minds, <clears throat> and humble their souls in his sight. Verse 18, saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord, Yahweh. Bashima Shai, and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. That's it. Now let me get real quick. What is it? A Sarai? Or is it a Sarai? Yep. 24, 18. Nope, it was uh, 18, 24. I always get it mixed up. Every time. There it is. <whistles> Ecclesiasticus 18 and 22. Let nothing hinder thee to pay thy vow in due time. Yeah, you've been bought with a price. The Lord requires something of you. All right. If you make it through, you're, you're of, of the Lord. You're one of his. And if you do not, you're, you're a thing. Uh, uh, you're anathema. A thing cursed or set aside till the Lord come. You don't want to be that. Okay. It says. Let nothing hinder thee to pay thy vow in due time and defer not unto death to be justified. Before thou prayest, because many people are going to be praying in that time of evil and anguish, but you ain't going to know the way, the name, the will. All right. Or. Or. <laughs> the mind of your power. OK. OK. You ain't going to know none of those things because it, it, it uh, tells you in another place. You have to know what the, the will of the Lord is. Come on now. Most people ain't going to know what the will of the Lord is. They're going to be thinking, oh, let me just listen to the government and get the chip. That's what the Lord want me to do. Like, nah, shut up. That wasn't the will of the Lord. He wants you to stand against it. Trust in him and leave society behind. Leave the world behind. All right. Man. Ecclesiastes 18 and 23. Before thou prayest, prepare thyself. Be not as one that tempteth the Lord. Many people are going to be trying to tempt the Lord. And you're going to be destroyed, stuck in a goddamn Tesla burn. Uh, uh, you're going to go into a city and be trapped there. You're going to be trying to be the hero and get crushed. All right. By the elephant in the room, like dude in the Maccabees literally was crushed by an elephant. But, hey. Uh, people going to be carted off to a concentration camp, trusting in the government. I right, call it on uh, 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 no gods and, and get no help. All right. And then the wrath is going to take you because you believe not in the only begotten son of the heavenly father, even Yahweh. You did not believe on Yahweh Shai as he is. All right. The deliverer. So the wrath of the father is going to be still on you. As it tells you in uh, the book of John six chapter, it says, Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end and the time of vengeance when he, Yahweh Bashimashai, shall turn away his face. Woo. Verse 25. When thou hast enough, remember the time of hunger. And when thou art rich, think upon poverty and need. Man, in that time, Jake, that was living it all good. And this time is really going to think about them times where they had it good. The time when they walked by, uh, by the camp. The time when they shunned the Lord. The time when they said, man, I'll get, I'll get to that when I'm 50 years old, my nigga. I'm getting my money right now. You don't think about that when your ass is starving, dying. A damn lion is hunting you or a robot dog is about to kill you. 
or your building is reduced to rubble or you have a, a, a blue helmets all throughout your your city walking down your city streets or you have uh foreign troopers in the land or you have marauders next door ransacking the house shooting everybody inside raping graping the woman all right and then in your, in your your house is next or your door is the next door in the hallway what you gonna do then or you women that are all single and shit and think you can't be touched you independent what you gonna do when when there's the uh dangers and evils everywhere and you know not Yahweh you didn't get with a man of the Lord or you didn't seek out the Lord or you didn't hear his men or you didn't uh, uh, or you despise his men or you were with one of his men and left and thought the Lord was dealing with you uh, uh, directly like nah you gonna know in that time okay you're gonna know alright so bear with me brothers Just trying to think uh Oh, oh, the shall not be heard. All right. And then up top, I'm going to get something else. Uh, let's go to the book of second address nine. And we're going to start at. Second address. Nine, and we'll start at uh, six, going into the elect first and then into the two thirds. It says, even so, the time also of the highest had plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. That's what we're seeing now. Effects and signs, tokens. War is on the brink, skirmishes, battles, rumors of war, reports of wars, the prophets in the midst of it all. Uh, uh, Esau, Edom being revealed, the wicked. All right, Amalek, the smallest of the flock, drawing everybody out into this third world's war. Okay? Nations arming themselves for this world conflict, this war uh, that shall lead to the destruction of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. All these things are happening. These are the effects and signs. It says, And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works, what? And by faith whereby ye have believed the elect shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning, the elect, the predestined. It says, verse nine, then shall they be in pitiful case who the two thirds, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments as those that are casting away the Lord, uh, casting uh, uh, behind them the ways of the Lord is going to be the ones that get the MOTB because in our law it says make no cutting in the flesh for the dead uh, have no gods before the Lord D don't bow down to to any all right don't don't worship no fleshly king uh, cursed be the man that uh, put his trust in man and make his flesh his arm instead of putting his trust in the Lord all right going down to Egypt for help trusting in the shadow of Egypt but the same is going to be your shame and confusion. How about that? All right. Bear with me, brothers. It is in Proverbs. Bear with me, brother. Yep. There it is. Proverbs 21 and 13. Whoso stoppeth his ear at the cry of the poor, the, the elect, the men of the Lord are seen as, we're just meek men, regular men. We don't go out there flashy and dressed up. We go out there with sackcloth as a sign unto you. Of the sign of Jonah the prophet, as Yahushua stated, only a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh the sign, but no sign shall be given unto it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. What was Jonah doing? He was prophesying. He was in the midst of the people of Nineveh, and he told them that the Lord was going to overthrow that city within a number of days. The difference uh, is between those Assyrians then, the people of Nineveh, and you people now, is that the Ninevites, they uh, repented, and the Lord kept back the, the, the danger or the trouble or the judgment. But this place, their sins have reached unto heaven. Babylon the Great, America. No, the Lord is going to destroy this place. He has already uh, uh, deter de determined it. He's, he's set in his way to destroy it. And nobody's going to turn him back. He will not repent from it. Okay? That's the difference. Now, now the same uh, uh, that Jake has is just like the Ninevites. You can repent. But a certain few of Jake, a certain number of Jake is going to repent and turn back. The elect. 
The rest of you, Jigs, you're going to be in pitiful case and the Lord going to have you in derision and he's going to destroy you for your insolence. All right. Because the test is here now. Proverbs 21 and 13. Whoso stoppeth his ear at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. You see that? So when you cry in the time of your distress and anguish and trouble, you will not be heard either. Okay? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, whether you be man or woman, that have scoffed at this word, denied it, threw it behind your back, thought it was crazy, thought it was madness, thought thought uh, what you had going on was far better than the truth. Like, nah, I'll get up with that. I'll get up with that later, man. You know? You know, kill that noise, man. I ain't trying to hear that. Well, then when you screaming and crying in anguish, ain't nobody going to hear you. All right? Not even the almighty one is going to hear you. He will not answer you. His son will not answer you. Even if you do know the name, but you have a horrible, evil spirit, hey, wisdom shall not enter into a malicious soul. So you're malicious and have an ulterior motive. Wisdom ain't with you anyway. Now, this is the book of Second Edges 9. And we'll start at, um, I already read uh, 9. So I'll, I'll read 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, you have not known the Lord, but you have received benefits. You've been made fat. You were the fat cow or the fat cat, the cash cow, so to speak. But you, there's nothing to avail. Everything that you have accumulated, will that be able to save you from the destruction that the Lord is about to bring upon this place? I think not. All right, second address, uh, nine and uh, 11. And they that have loathed my law, two thirds, while they had yet liberty, the camps, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto the, the camps, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. <laughs> Two thirds. And therefore, be thou, thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. You see that? Man, that's it. Call all your Now let me get uh I'm gonna go to Wisdom of Solomon. Get that uh no torment is gonna touch uh the elect. All right, those that trust in Yah Shai, no torment shall happen unto them. But let me get uh, down below. We're gonna get this modern translation in the apocrypha, but we're gonna go to uh uh the 16th uh, chapter. All right. The Lord is going to find all you people. You're not going to be able to hide from the Lord and his angels. And we're going to get that. Let's go to the point. It's like it. Damn, what the hell is going on? It's a man. It's, oh, the New Year Bible. Okay. <laughs> all these Bible apps now. It's popping up every place. But hey, I already got the best one. This one I'm using right here. It's good enough. But, um, Bear with me, brothers. Let's go down to the point. I'm going to play this clip back. What we had on time? Not bad. Okay. Mm. Start at. Mm. Yep. I'm going to start right there. And we're going to start right here. All right. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of Yahweh. By Shemel Shai and there shall no torment touch them. Now we read with about the two thirds in 2nd Edges 9. They shall dwell in torments. But here it says the righteous shall no torment touch them. See? All right. Now this is 2nd uh, Edges 16 and 50. Modern translation. So righteousness despises sinfulness, no matter how attractive it may look. It may look. Now, what's going to look attractive in this time that, that I'm talking about Jacob's trouble? Uh, any, any, any reprieve, any relief. All right. That, that MOTB is going to look mighty fine, mighty good. Right. But you is going to be a conscious decision that you have to make in order to be good. Do you want to be good 
in your own mind? Uh, do you want your belly satisfied or do you want to be good in the sight of the Lord and be filled with his Holy Spirit? Come on now. Do you want to be filled with some weak ass bread or cakes or whatever the fuck they give you when you get the, the MOTB or do you want to be filled with the spirit? The choice is yours, but really it's not your choice. It's the choice of the Lord. And that's the scary thing. Are you ready for the test? All right. When the Lord says pencils down, <laughs> when the pencils are down, the men that pass the test going to have crowns on the new bodies and the ones that failed are going to be dead. So pencils down. Where are you going to stand in this test? Will you have a crown and be in the chariot, beautified, whether you be man or woman and child? Or will you be on the opposite end, dead by what, uh, whatever manner of death the Lord sees fit for you, whether it be sword, famine, pestilence, teeth of wild beasts, missiles, laser fire, <laughs> or uh, uh, um, just, just riding on the streets uh, somewhere or in the field? Where's it going to be the end for you? Come on now. It says, so righteousness despises sinfulness, no matter how attractive it may look. Righteousness will expose every sin in the world and condemn it face to face when her defender comes. Our defender is Yahweh by Shemel Shai through his blood. We're going to overcome this system. It says, so do not imitate sinfulness or what it does. So we're not going to imitate it. We don't want what Esau is bringing. Fuck him and his NWO. We want the world that the Lord is bringing. A world wherein dwelleth righteousness it says for in a very short time sinfulness will be swept out of the world and righteousness will rule among us verse 53 sinners must not deny their sins you just you have to confess them at this time and repent while the door of repentance is still open but we read in second Corinthians 9 uh, they despised and loathed the law of the lord when when the open place of repentance was open unto them they despised what was being said what the law entails how good they can feel, the mercy of the Lord, the freedom in the Lord, all right, and the and, and uh, the the being unshackled from the chains of this of uh, this uh, sinful body that we're in. They didn't want it. They didn't want that. They wanted the bag. They wanted money. They wanted pleasure. All right. They wanted this world, and in the end thereof, the the price for that was death. The wages of sin is death. All right. It reads on, it says, sinners must not deny their sins. Those who say that they have not sinned against Yahweh by Shemel Shai and his majesty are only bringing fiery shame upon themselves. Ultimately, nuclear fire and laser fires from the ships. When the Lord comes to rebuke with flames of fire and to convince all that have uh, uh, of all their ungodly speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. That's what he's going to bring on you that think you ain't done no wrong. Well, I did it to eat. I did it for my babies. I don't give a fuck about that. I told you not to take that. Since you took it, I'm taking you out of this world. All right. But those that, that resist and hold on and trust in the Lord, he's going to give them abundance where their children shall not see hell, the grave. It says the Lord, verse 54, Yahweh, Bashim El Shai, certainly knows everything that people do. Let me read that again. The Lord Yahweh, Bashim Al Shai, certainly knows everything that people do. He knows their plans and innermost thoughts. So the Lord's going to know, already knows if you're going to get the MOTB, if you're going to betray uh, uh, him, if you're going to fall away, if you're going to trust in this world, having loved this present evil world. And then the Lord's going to know if you truly trust in him and love him and stick with him and call, call upon his name. He's going to know. The Lord already knows. It says, when the Lord, Yahweh Bashimashai, said, let the world be created, it was done. When he said, let the sky be created, that was done too. Verse 56, he set the stars in place by his own command, and he knows how many of them there are. Woo. Verse 57, he knows what is in the deepest parts of the sea and the treasures that are in that are there. Woo. He has measured the sea and everything that is in it. Verse 58. By his word, he confined the sea to its place and put the land on top of the water. Woo. Let's go. Verse 59. The Lord, Yahweh Bashimashai, stretched out the sky and fixed it firmly over the water like a dome. All right. Because the earth hangeth upon nothing. It tells you that in another place. He put springs of water in the deserts and lakes in the high mountains so that water could flow down in rivers. 
and water the land. The Lord, Yahweh Bashemashai, created human beings and gave each one of them a heart, which is a mind, spirit. He gave them life, breath, and understanding. How much more his people, the Israelites. Verse 62, which is the spirit of Yahweh, the Almighty, who created everything and who knows all secrets and sees into all hidden places. Bashem Yahweh Shai. My people, the Lord knows everything you plan and the secret thoughts of your heart, your mind. Sinners who try to hide their sins are doomed, judged. You're already, you're already judged. Verse 64, the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Hashai, will carefully examine everything you do. So like you, the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Hashai, will carefully examine everything you have done and bring you to judgment. Going into the two thirds. On that day, you will be thrown into utter confusion. All your sins will be publicly exposed and the wicked things you have done will witness against you. Two thirds, you see. But on the flip side, this was going to happen to the elect. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 2. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. The elect, because we died to this world. We, we trusted in the Lord. We might have lost certain things that we had. We didn't give a, a, a shit because we're gaining the world to come. This is in the sight of the unwise. They seem to die. Some of us are going to be beheaded. And people are going to be looking at uh, uh, the men that die, you know, like as fools, like a dummy. Should have just took the goddamn thing. Shit. At least he, he would have been chilling like this, eating like me. Now, now he got his head gone. But not knowing that that brother right there with, with his head gone got a crown on it, though, in the new body. On the ships, where you Howard Shai destined to come back. Come on now. So we won. Lord's one, I'm one of those men. The elect is gonna win. You niggas are gonna lose. All right. Those of you that trust in this stupid society, you see where the fuck it's going. But if you trust in it, and hey, the Lord is giving you to empty things and to the full, full things. All right. It says, in the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and the departure is taken for misery. Verse three, and they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. Woo. That like Yahweh said, in the world, we shall have tribulation, but in him, we shall have peace. We're going to have a peace of mind. We're going to have reason with us when everybody else uh, uh, doesn't have reason. or they're in perplexity. They're bugged out. We're going to have peace. We have a sure, uh, a, a more sure word of prophecy. We don't know what's coming. Is wisdom of Solomon 3 and 4, for though they be punished in the sight of men, the elect, yet is their hope full of immortality. Woo, that's what it's going to lead to. Not being able to die, immortality. Verse 5, and having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded, for Yahweh proved them and found them worthy for himself. Woo! Verse 6, as gold in the furnace have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering you see that man the lord is he's no he knows what he's about to do the lord's about to bring a great test will you pass it all right will you be confident enough to pass all right now, this is the book of uh second edges 16 and i'm gonna read 65 on that day, you will be thrown into utter confusion. Two thirds. All your sins will be publicly exposed and wicked thing and the wicked things you have done. Getting the MOTB, other madness that's going to lead to your d d death. All right. You, it's going to be exposed and then you're going to die in that. It says. All your sins will be publicly exposed. And the wicked things you have done will witness against you. What will you do then? Verse 66. How will you hide your sins from Yahweh by Shemashai and his angels? Yahweh by Shemashai is your judge. So fear him. Abandon your sins. That's what the elect is going to do. Put away the evil you have done and never sin again. Then Yahweh by Shemashai will save you from all these disasters. Let's go to the point of the elect. Verse 74. But listen to what the Lord Yahweh by Shemashai says, my chosen people. The time of terrible suffering is near, but I will rescue you. Don't be afraid or have any doubts. I am your power and I will lead you. <laughs> if you keep my laws and commands, says the Lord Yahweh, Bashim Ashai, you must not let your sins weigh you down or control you. 
See that, man? I'm going to play this clip and read these uh, few more scriptures and then I'm going to close out with this lesson. Shalom. Salakia. Salakia. Bear with me. All right. Shalom. I'm back. I'm going to read these uh, few scriptures and we're going to close out uh, uh, with the clip. But I'm going to read uh, these few scripts and then I'm going to close out. All right. This lesson. Lord, when you've been edified. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 7. And in the time of their visitation. All right. Who it elect? They shall shine because the visitation is when a power meets a mortal and uh, our power is going to return through his expressed image. Even Yahweh Shah Mashiach, our Lord, and we're going to be changed. The elect will be changed. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. The Lord is going to give us spiritual power, abilities beyond belief. <laughs> they shall judge the nations woo, and have dominion over the people because we're going to be crowned. When when it, when the Lord says pencils down, you gonna know like I did I I put everything in in uh, uh, into this test. I came into this test knowing exactly how I was gonna do. You gotta come into this thing knowing, hey, you gonna give it your all. You gonna pass the test, all right? Because you have asked the Lord to examine you, or to try you. Ooh, try my reins. Let me, to like it. Let me get that. That David said that. Let me get. I gotta get that. So like it. Just thought about it super quick right now. So like it. What the hell is going? On? All right, there we go. So like it. Come on. Everything moving on slow. All right. <clears throat> Try me. Reigns. Let me. I'm gonna put reins in. Blue letter going slow. Come on. All right. Bear with me, brother Salakia. All right. Reigns. Bear with the slowness of this madness. All right. Yep. Reigns. Man, Psalm 7. And nine. All right, because in the midst of Jacob's trouble, it's going to uh, bring the end of the wicked. We're we, we going to know that, hey, once all this happens, the kingdom is coming and the wicked is going to be eradicated out of the earth and put down. All right. This is Psalm 7 and 9. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just for the righteous power. Try at the hearts, your mind and reins, your innermost thoughts, your intent, your spirit. All right. Psalm 16 and 7, I will bless the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Shai, who have given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night season. The Lord is going to put into your mind your instruction when you're sleeping. Because when you're in the, those times, a sleep is going to be hard to come by, but among the elect, there's going to be peace. There's going to be abundance. It said the Lord giveth his beloved sleep. Because in those times uh, for the wicked, there ain't going to be no rest. It says there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. So if you're wicked, whether you be the heathen or you be uh, among our people, you ain't going to have no rest. OK, you ain't going to be able to sleep. But when the Lord puts us down to sleep, he's going to put in to our mind instruction to overcome, to win, to pass the test. This is Psalm uh, 26 and 2. Examine me, O Lord. Yahweh, by Shemal Shah, and prove me. This is what we're going to be asking. This is what our spirit is going to be crying out in that time uh, for the Lord to to uh, 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 to exact. He's going to truly try us, test us. And he's going to be like, hey, hey, that's that's my man right there. Just like Job was tested and he came uh, through and received double for all that he lost. He says, examine me, O Lord, Yahweh, by Shemel Shai, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. All right. You see that? Now we're going to go down there. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. They that put their trust in him, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, the Israelites, beginning with the hopeful elect at house of David. And he have care for his elect. All right. Let's play this back. That's it. Baby, 
got more cakes than Duncan Hines, man. Mm. Mm. Bet you buy the chip. <laughs> you <don't laughs> hear what he said? Bet you buy the chip. <laughs> Yeah, you gonna have all this cake, but bet you buy the chip, though. And you're gonna be destroyed because you got the chip. <laughs> about the interest rate, the interest rate hasn't moved two percent in five years. Do you okay. five, five Talk years. to you later. So how you guys think you did on the test? You see that? That's what's gonna be the question asked to you. How you think you did on the test? How you think you did? You gotta know. How you how you gonna do? Fail me. All right, I'm gonna read these last few scriptures. Akim, this is our verse ten. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous, woo, and forsaken the Lord. Verse eleven. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain, and their labors unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. Damn. Woo. That said a lot. I said a whole lot. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, hey, so with that, hey, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakah Kodash, by whom we do function, double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect that house of David. To you brothers out there fighting this. Good fight of faith, keep it up. To your sisters doing that, which is becoming of women, shalom. And to those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say, shalom. Those when you have been edified. And just like in the clip where they was driving, hey, you got to stay in your lane when it comes to this, this truth, man. Stay in your lane. Keep, keep running the race. Keep the faith and pass the test. So with that, hey, I say shalom. On to the next one. Shalom.